we'd like to ask you first, how big is the marketing department of AIB and what is your current focus? So the marketing function here in AIB, uh, we are 35 people strong. Um, it's an amalgamation of three different departments that we brought together last year to make a group marketing function. And we've got a mixture of people who've been in the bank some time. We've got a mixture of younger folk who've joined the bank in the last four or five years. And we've a mixture of some newly imported seasoned marketeers. So we've got a great mix of old plus new and uh, the learning plus uh, the, the, the wise old adults. So it gives us a great mix of energy and experience throughout the business. Um, our focus as a business is very simply is to restore customer trust in the AIB brand and restore customer trust in the EBS brand, plain and simple. That is the name of the game for us and that's what all of our energies are focused against. And I think focus is probably the key word for us. It's about focus, focus, focus focusing our limited resources against a singular task in order to drive a difference in the business, ultimately to make this business investable for private investment and return uh, uh, a dividend to the taxpayer. You previously worked at Diageo. Yeah. How different is it working within marketing for a financial institution versus an FMCG? I think the, uh, the fundamentals are absolutely the same. So it is a focus on the customer and the customer needs. Start with the customer and work your way in from there. Start with the outside and work your way in. Um, the extremities are different in the sense of um, banking is much more regulated than the alcohol industry. I thought alcohol was reasonably well regulated until I came to work in banking and it is extraordinarily um, regulated. There's an awful lot of compliance and risk issues to be dealt with. And keeping the customer at the heart of that conversation is a, uh, it's a challenge at times but is a challenge that this business is committed to. Um, we are determined to make AIB a customer-centric business in order to serve our customers better. And how do you envisage doing that over the next six months, 12 months? Yeah, so we've, um, we, we talked last year to build out the group marketing function and also to develop our brand strategies. So we have very clear and distinct brand strategies that we have um, outlined throughout the business for our brands. And our role now is aligning the business to um, execute those strategies completely against the customer. So it is getting the business to think customer first and it is getting the business to put the customer at the heart of everything that we do. If the customer isn't at the heart of everything that we do, then we stop doing those things that aren't customer centric. Challenge for a lot of people. A challenge for a lot of people. It's a big super tanker of a business and it will take a little while, but we're well on that journey. Great. And have you, how have you adapted your skill set to adapt to various roles that you've had? And what would be your recommendation to marketers to ensure that they can diversify according to roles and maybe a changing landscape? Yeah, I think um, uh, you never finish learning, number one. So you're constantly learning on the job, which is a, a hugely important. The day that you finish learning something new, I think, is the day that you start becoming complacent and you're on that downward slide. Um, getting as much diversity into your role is absolutely crucial. Um, so it is not all about making the 30-second TV ad. Actually, there is as much... Um, uh, fun and energy to be sourced from developing a great social program or a search engine optimization piece. Um, and I think keeping a really close eye on the commercials. You have to be a commercial marketeer in this day and age. So if you cannot quote the bottom line and if you cannot generate your return on investment figures, then it makes conversations at senior management and board level much more difficult in terms of generating investment behind your brands. And from your experience, what are the key tactics for building back customer confidence in a brand? So, um, key tactics um, don't really change by sector. The, the, the truths always hold the same and the truth is based in the customer insight. So why do customers behave the way they do, not um, how do they behave the way they do. So customers don't want a mortgage, they want to buy a home. right? So you need to sort of start with the customer insight and build back from there. And then match that with the very basic truths, the core truths about your own brand and look for the overlap between the two. And that applies regardless of whether you're in finance, you're in alcohol, or you're in FMCG, or you're in technology. What's the truth behind what the customer wants to do and the truth behind what your brand can credibly do? And then do that better than anybody else and then tell the customer that you're doing it. You've held a number of um, very senior roles in, in large organizations. Yep. What do you think is the key traits in terms of strong leadership capabilities? I think, um, so first of all, know your own weaknesses and be prepared to admit them um, is first off the bat. Don't hide. Number two is hire people who are much smarter than you and let them get on with doing their jobs. 
So, and don't be afraid of that. And support your team and put your team forward and let them become as big as they can be. Um, and let them do the hard work for you. Hire really smart people and get out of their way. And what has been the best piece of career advice that you've learnt? Um, the best piece of career advice I've learnt is find out what really, really motivates you. Find out what it is that makes you tick, that makes you get out of bed in the morning and then chase that. Um, and never stop learning, never stop questioning, always look to improve. Um, it's an ongoing journey. But if you can find out what sort of rocks your boat and then constantly learn as you're going, then you'll do okay. The obvious next question yeah. is, what, what motivates you? <laughs> <laughs> what motivates me is, um, is winning, is taking brands that need turnaround and actually restoring them back to where, where they once were and restoring public trust in them. Um, and it applies across brands, across a number of sectors. It's about growth in brands and it's about proving that effective marketing drives the bottom line. Demonstrating a really strong return on your marketing dollar will drive growth in your brand um, and be very commercial about your plans. So marketing does not exist in an ivory tower. Yes, we need to grow our brands, but at the same time we need to pull the levers that will grow our bottom line first. And organic growth is hugely, hugely important. Um, and being able to demonstrate that marketing and brand and sales growth are inextricably linked is absolutely key. You've been quite involved in the AIM Awards and have seen and witnessed a number of successful marketing pieces throughout your career. Mm -hmm. What is your favourite example of marketing at its very best and why? So the piece that stands out for me is actually um, the winner in last year's uh, small business category, Kyo's Crisps. I think Tom Kyo and uh, his family and his business have done an extraordinary job in terms of building a brand from nothing and in terms of adding value to that product. So how do you take the humble potato and add value to it and grow a brand out of nothing rapidly to a position where it's now on the top of people's tongues, both uh, literally and mentally. Um, and I, I, I take my hat off to them. They've done product innovation. They're fantastic at doing their own PR. They've had limited budgets but got huge cut through. They've been brilliant at building their distribution um, and they've been building uh, fantastic at taking every opportunity to put their name forward. So they've gone from a position of really being known for their potatoes, if even known for that, to a position now where their extension Kyo's Crisps is actually leading their business and driving their business forward and back to their main product, which is around potatoes. But they've based it all in the product truth of quality. It's all about quality with Kyo's Crisps um, and they've done a fantastic job with that. Where do you think marketing is headed in the next few years? What will the future hold for marketers? Yep. So uh, marketing is becoming uh, much more about the effectiveness game. So proving your effectiveness, proving that your marketing spend works, driving at your return on investment. We demand that from our internal stakeholders. They demand it of us. We demand it from our agencies. So marketing effectiveness is absolutely the name of the game going forward, number one. Number two, it is about speed and agility. It is not about running a campaign and then three months later getting the results of that and uh, amending that for the next uh, wave of the campaign. It's much more about course correction in the moment. More and more campaigns are have digital integration or indeed digital led, so social led, search engine led, and therefore allows you to the opportunity to course correct on a daily basis. And therefore being able to move with that fleet of foot it becomes crucially important and actually that's what gives you the extra edge. You'll never out strategize your competition. Competition is full of smart people regardless of the sector and everybody can have brilliant strategies. Strategies are useless when it comes to the execution and it's what the customer sees that counts and it's what the customer says about what they see that really counts and if you can take that on board and course correct in real time that will give you the extra edge. And you've mentioned quite a lot about um, marketing ROI. Mm. If you had to tell people what are the key steps to actually use for a good marketing ROI plan, what would that be? So, um, start with focus. Right? So there's a number of different models around ROI that you can implement across your business, but ultimately it comes back to focus. Have real clarity of focus about why you're undertaking a particular piece of activity. Have a single-minded objective. The worst word you can see on a brief or an activity plan is the word and. 
There should only be one single-minded objective about why you're spending money. If it happens to do other positive things, that's well and good, but is it achieving what you're setting out to do? So really understanding that and being very clear about your activity selection to drive against your customer goal is absolutely key. Um, and then have measurement in place, have single-minded measurement, get it as close as possible to the reality of the customer world um, and understand what it is you're measuring. And then that takes you well down the line to being able to match your marketing spend versus your effectiveness. And don't be afraid to admit uh, defeat. Don't be afraid to admit that it didn't work. Celebrate that it didn't work. Learn, learn fast and move on. And then you'll get better and better and better. The best marketeers have failed often, but they fail very fast and they learn and they move on. Small and medium sized businesses make up a large percentage of our economy. Yep. What would you be your advice to those listening to this um, who are small to medium businesses yep. and who may not have the same budget or resources as yep. AIB? Yeah, great question. And, and you're right, they are the backbone of the economy and AIB is really proud to be associated with the M Awards and, and that particular category. And it's reflective of our commitment to the SME sector and throughout the rest of our business. Um, I think the size of budget is irrelevant. To be honest, the principles remain the same regardless of the amount of money that you have. And in fact, very often you'll find those with the smaller budgets um, have more intelligent campaigns because they're forced to think smarter, which is great. Um, so really, again, it is about focus, being really clear about who your target is, who it is, who is it that you're trying to talk to? Is it your customer? Is it your distributors? Whoever it is that you're talking to, be really honest about that and be really clear about what you want them to do as a result of your activity. And then that will guide you towards actually what is the best way to talk to these people. And it may be that the best way is a piece of PR activity. It may be the best way is a press release. It can be any one of a bunch of different marketing disciplines. But you have to be really clear about who you're talking to and why you're talking to them. Um, and you know, a tight budget actually will force you to be much, much harder on yourself. And you'll get much greater resource, much greater results potentially. And you look at the likes, again, I go back to, to Kill's Crisps. Those guys, I'm sure, don't have huge budgets, and yet they've achieved such huge cut through in their category. And that's about being smart and intelligent and fleet of foot. Great, thank you very much. That was Tom Kinsella, Marketing Director of AIB.